what is going on everyone it is your boy cjr sports and today we are back with another fantasy football mock draft so if you haven't seen these uh before i'm making a series where i draft from the one through the 12 spot right now we're on spot three and we just go through like a normal mock draft i explain my picks why i chose them and the various spots that I select, players that I, I'm higher on, players that I'm lower on. Um, if you enjoy this, leave a like. Let me know down in the comments if you enjoy these type of videos. And let's get right into it. But before we start, kind of go over uh, the format. There is no defense and no kicker. We have two flex spots and five bench spots with the normal two running back, two wide receiver, one tight end, one quarterback. So let's get right into it. Let's see where these players fall. So Jonathan Taylor, then Derrick Henry. I'm going to kind of go in my thought process that Christian McCaffrey will be there. I think if I take Christian McCaffrey, uh, McCaffrey at three, it's kind of cheating. If you've watched um, episodes one and two, You'll know that I'm not very high on Christian McCaffrey. I like Austin Eckler better than both those uh, players, which I am going to take Austin Eckler right here. For those that haven't seen already, I think Austin Eckler is going to have an enormous season this year. Not only because of the, um, not only because of just Justin Herbert in general. I think the defense is going to be a massive help. Uh, when your defense can put you into situations, I mean, they they upgraded the defensive line tremendously, adding uh, Khalil Mack and jo uh, Sebastian Joseph Day, who was a very underrating signing. You got uh, uh, J.C. Jackson, who's going to help him in the long run as well. I mean, they've really upgraded the on the defense side of the ball. So I I only think that should help Justin Herbert, and that should also give Austin Eckler more goal line carries when your defense put you in the uh put you in a good spot on a good uh side of the field that could you know good possession and everything with that that should really help austin eckler and that should help justin herbert as well so i'm gonna be taking just uh austin eckler with the third uh pick in the draft and maybe on the turn, if Herbert is available, I'm not here, but maybe at 3-3, maybe I take Herbert and take a stack. Uh, something I am don't really do, but with these mock drafts, I'm definitely not opposed to trying things that I haven't uh, before. And usually Mark Andrews isn't here at this turn, so maybe I do something a little bit out of my comfort zone and out of the ordinary maybe where I go with a tight end than a quarterback here because Mark Andrews is technically a wide receiver I mean he is easily Lamar Jackson's favorite target and especially with Hollywood Brown not being in the offense anymore there is gonna have to there's gonna be targets that, that's going to have to go to somewhere else uh, and the, I mean it's, it's most of them, I mean, not most of them, some of them can definitely be taken away from the running game with uh, J.K. Dobbins and Gus Edwards coming back, but I think the majority of them are, will go to Mark Andrews. So for that, and get the, and I'm going to talk about it in one of these videos when if you can get one of the top three tight ends, I think you have to take them. Top three to five, and Mark Andrews is easily one of the top three tight ends in the league. Well, maybe not easily, but top five tight ends in the league. You have to take one of those top five tight ends in the league. And he is not only a top tight end in the league, he's also one of the best receiving options in the league. And to be able to get that in a in a, in a fantasy football position where after the first six or seven, it gets very hard to find one of those top guys in the later rounds. If you can get one of those top guys, take them. And we kind of talked about it. We're going to take Justin Herbert to stack with Austin Eckler. And with Austin Eckler that we also didn't say is the, you know, this is a PPR format. I always do a one point PPR format. He, with the, with the stack with Justin Herbert and Austin Eckler, I want that expression of PPR format. So that's why we're going to take Justin Herbert to stack with Austin Eckler. I'm going to have to get a running back right here. I can get receivers, uh, 
later in the draft i'm okay with that i'm gonna have to get a running back right here due to the uh the bye week situation so uh i would really like jk dobbins but already having mark andrews i would maybe steer away from him uh travis Etienne is definitely very interesting to me right here maybe i go receiver i mean uh we can maybe bring uh, DJ Moore's name back up with Baker Mayfield being traded to the Carolina Panthers. I think that only helps DJ Moore with having Baker throw the football versus uh, Sam Darnold or Matt Corral. So I'm actually going to do something I wasn't planning on doing right uh, here in a player that I've been lower on, which is DJ Moore which I think now I'm going to have to change my rankings and put DJ Moore a little higher. I'm going to take DJ Moore, have him be my wide receiver one, put a, some of my faith into Baker Mayfield and Travis Etienne zone. I was considering at the 4-10, I can get at 5-3. Uh, we don't know how James Robinson's going to come back from his Achilles tear. And, he, I mean, Travis Etienne in a PPR format, again, is going to be very similar to Austin Eckler with Trevor Lawrence being... Travis Etienne, I mean, they're, they're best friends. They're going to be each other's best friends on the field. The, I mean, there's definitely a chance where Travis Etienne can also play the slot and outside and where just where Trevor Lawrence will also throw him the football. And I think through the uh, tackles, he doesn't get enough credit when he's also running in the A and B gaps as well. So with my running back, too, I'm going to take Travis Etienne in a PPR format. I really like the way this team's coming out. I'm able to get two really good running backs a wide receiver a tight end who's also a receiver and a quarterback and then have the stack with them with the running back and quarterback stack really funny i could go mike williams and really have this stack but there's some i mean mike williams adp i mean it's very hard to pass up mike williams at this 610 spot right here for sure oh god it's so hard to pass up Mike Williams right here. I don't know. I don't know how you do. I don't know how you pass up Mike Williams. The the silence right here is me contemplating. Do I take Mike Williams or not? And just because it's a mock draft and we can't, I'm gonna take Mike Williams. I'm gonna take the best player available. And hopefully, and the and Adam Thielen does fall fall to me. I was going to take Brandon Cooks right there and then Adam Thielen afterwards, but Mike Williams was on the board. I'm going to take Mike Williams. He's going to work in conjunction with Justin Herbert and Austin Eckler. I, my my week eight is going to be rough where I there there's a chance I get blown out week eight, but I'd rather get blown out week eight versus take players on bye weeks and then having to, you know, in you know week 14, I'm going to have to try to play someone. I'm okay losing a week eight by when I know throughout the season that Justin Herbert is going to be uh, potentially a quarterback one and then having in the first six games of the season last year, Mike Williams be his favorite target and Austin Eckler are going to take all the goal line carries. I mean, I don't hate this at all. And guess what? I'm going to take Adam Thielen right here. Who's going to be my flex, my first flex spot who in the, this new Kevin O'Connell uh, offensive scheme, the way that Cooper Cup was able to succeed. I think Justin Jefferson is going to be that more than Adam Thielen, but before Robert Woods was going to get hurt, he was going to have a 1,000-yard uh, season as well. So I will take a 1,000 yards with Adam Thielen as my flex spot. That's kind of be my thought process. I know he's a little older. He has still performed at a very high level one being was 32 or 33 years old at this point he will be just fine he's Kirk Cousins favorite target and I think getting Irv Smith back is only going to help him in the goal line and those goal line uh, touches because having Irv Smith on one side and Adam Thielen on the other side and Justin Jefferson in the slot is it going to be dangerous versus Tyler Conklin on the other side you don't fear Tyler Conklin as much as you would Irv Smith in my personal opinion so getting Adam Thielen on one side Irv Smith on the other side Justin Jefferson in the slot and Dalvin Cook running up the middle that's deadly in the red zone 
and goal line that should really help Adam Thielen and improve his touchdowns over the you know the course of the season. Uh, here, you know, in these kind of like back-to-back -back picks, I'm looking to take another receiver and running back depth. There's a running back who I really like here um, that's slowly moving up people's draft boards. And I think if I don't take him here, if I don't take him here, I don't think he's going to come to the turn to me. So I'm going to go right up and go get him. James Cook, I'm very high on. Uh, just the same reasons why I'm very high on Austin Eckler and Travis Etienne is just that PPR upside. They have the upside of where they can catch six, seven balls coming out of the backfield and where they can take one 80 yards to the end zone. And not only that, but my personal opinion, I think over the next, over the next two or three seasons, you're going to see James Cook is going to be in a, in a more in an effective runner on the ground game over Austin Eckler and Travis Etienne in a couple of years, which I think we're going to see that start this year with him being a rookie. Devin Singletary is going to think he's going to get a lot of the work in the first half of the year. But with my running back three as a rookie, I'm willing to take that risk where he can be a normal week-to-week -week starter for me by like week eight on. And that's what I'm hoping with James Cook. He has the PPR upside. If he can get 10 touches, 12 touches on the ground, that's all I need from him, and then I'll be satisfied with his production. And then here, uh, one of the players that I think that people should watch out for is I kind of named him earlier when I was talking about Adam Thielen. It is Robert Woods. Robert Woods, to me, is a very interesting player. Coming off the ACL, getting traded, going to a new team, but he's going to be the number one receiver on that team. We don't know how Traylon Burks is going to be. We don't know who that player is yet. We know who Robert Woods is. We know who Robert Woods is. There's a potential chance where he misses a couple of weeks or he's not fully ready or he's not 100%. He's going to be on the field, but he's not going to be 100% for a couple of weeks. That's okay. I have DJ Moore, Mike Williams, Adam Thielen that can pick up that slack when until he's there. But he was gonna be he was on pace for a thousand yards last year before the ACL. He was on pace for a thousand yards. I believe it's three consecutive straight years where he's been a thousand yard receiver as well. He hasn't shown regression yet. The only regression that he's shown since it has been his injury. Uh, I will. In the ninth round, I will take a chance on someone that was going to be a thousand yard receiver last year. I will take that chance. And then here, it's more as I'm going to take the upside of Jamison Williams being in that Detroit offense and going to be the number one whenever he comes back from the ACL surgery. We know when you trade from 32 all the way to I think 11 or 12, you know you have massive upside for that player and there could be a chance for this season that Jamison Williams doesn't play a lot because they're waiting for the future of Jamison Williams maybe they don't want to rush him back in from injury maybe they want the longevity of J uh, Jamison Williams but whatever Jamison Williams I get on the field is what I want I want Jamison Williams in the field and if that's 85% Jamison Williams I think that's better than some of the receivers that have already been picked uh, previously and I think he's gonna get along with uh, Jared Goff uh, be able to take the under routes and he can go into an offense and learn an offense and a team that's should be better this year and Goff being another year into the system gained a few weapons it should really help him in the long run I think Jameson Williams is going to really gravitate towards the receivers in the receiver room. And then once I look here, now this is when uh, things start getting a little dry. When I start kind of going down the list, I'm not really looking for surefire players. Uh, you see the start. I'm going to take Naeem Himes. I need one more running back until I feel careful, and I do. Uh, Naeem Himes to me uh, if Jonathan Taylor gets injured at all it's gonna be him or Philip Lindsay gonna be taking the load in Indianapolis uh, when the head coach uh, comes out and says that you if you're playing fantasy football this year you need to draft this kid I'm gonna take the upside I'm gonna draft him see what happens 
he should be a PPR uh, stud. As you can kind of tell from my running backs on this draft, I'm going with the PPR studs. Players that are going to catch three, four, five passes, and let's see what they can do with them. And then maybe get a, you know, a couple of handoffs there too. PPR, to me, is the way to go with these running backs. Um, so that's kind of why I got Naeem Hines, James Cook, Travis Etienne, and Austin Eckler right here. Jarvis Landry falls to me. I would take him all day long, get him in the 12th round, potential where he goes and he's the number one to start in uh, New Orleans. If Mike Thomas isn't ready, there is a chance where Jarvis Landry is the Jameis Winston's number one receiver with Chris Olave. If Michael Thomas does start and does play, then you, you know we can consider different players at that spot. But with Mike Thomas not being 100% yet, get Jarvis Landry, get the number one receiver into a team that could be down uh, going into some games, or not going down into some games, but be down in some games where they're going to have to throw the ball a lot. And Jameis Winston should really get the ball to Jarvis Landry. And last but not least, we're going to be drafting Jarvis Landry's best friend, Odell Beckham Jr. Whenever Odell Beckham Jr. comes back from injury, He's going to be a number one receiver if that's back to the Rams and that's to the Packers. I hope he goes to the Packers. That's the best case scenario for all of our fantasy football teams. If you if were able to get Odell Beckham Jr. and he goes to the Packers, he's easily the best receiver in that room. And that only helps us better. And guess what? We have DJ Moore, Mike Williams, Adam Thielen, Robert Woods, Jarvis Landry, Odell Beckham Jr., Jamison Williams, and then we're able to maybe flip one of these guys for a running back. Like Robert Woods for Chase Edmonds, or Robert Woods for like a Tony Pollard. Somewhere around there. So, you know, then we can start flipping players. But before we end the video, let's check out this team one last time. So, let's bring that down. Sorry. This is our team, Austin Eckler, Mark Andrews, Justin Herbert, DJ Moore, Travis Etienne, Mike Williams, Adam Thielen, James Cook, Robert Woods, Jamison Williams, Naim Himes, Jarvis Landry, Odell Beckham Jr. This is probably the best team I have made so far since, re since doing these fantasy football videos. Uh, just give this video a like. It's been a blast hanging out with you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed. Leave a comment if there's anyone else that you would have picked during my selections. I would love to hear you guys and what you guys would have picked. And, you know, that's the end of this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. And it's your boy, CJ Sports. And I'm out. Peace, guys.